From Emir herself theorizing on Facebook that Titans are made of yeast, to the idea that Attack on Titan is actually a prequel to the movie Madagascar, my mission had become very clear. I went and researched the most ridiculous theories out there. Some of these are spine-bendingly bad, while others are downright hilarious. In this short video, I'm going to debunk the most insane Attack on Titan fan theories. And believe me, these get pretty wild. Number 1. Titans could solve world hunger. This theory argues that Titans can and should be used as an unlimited food source. Their incredible ability to regenerate means that if used correctly, we may very well have a plausible solution to world hunger. The idea here is you capture a few Titans, make some Titan steaks, they grow back, you rinse and repeat. I won't argue their morality or ethics of doing this, but most of the people in favor argue that Titans don't feel pain anyways. What do you think? It'd be a little ironic, wouldn't it? Number 2. Titans are made of yeast. This theory has been floating around for quite a while, and for for just reason. There are several clues that have led fans to believe this. Yeast can last a long time with little nutrition, explaining the incredible longevity of Titans. Yeast also emits heat and gas, which would explain the steamy nature of Titan anatomy. Yeast also doesn't require sunlight to grow, but is much more productive when absorbing UV rays, which explains how Titans are mostly active during the day. If this wasn't enough, there's even an information panel in the anime itself specifically talking about yeast, and this was around the time in the show when figuring out what the Titans are was a big focus. Either this was placed here to be intentionally misleading, or the original enemy of mankind is made up of an essential ingredient needed to make pizza. Number 3. A Potential Solution this theory has some bite to it. Ever since Attack on Titan's story encompassed more than just the threat of pure titans, finding a solution for world peace has been at the forefront of the anime. This theory has a very interesting solution to the unending cycle of hatred, violence, and vengeance. This could come about with just 8 noble sacrifices. One titan shifter will devour all the others and then encase themselves in crystal, forever locking away the power of the titans. This would eliminate the fear surrounding Eldians and permanently suspend the cycle of war and hatred. Or would it? This theory relies on the heavy speculation that people don't age when crystallized. Also, there are two pieces of evidence that essentially prove that Armin must survive in the end. He's the narrator throughout the entire show, and Kruger entrusted Grisha to find a way to save Mikasa and Armin. If it's really possible to forever be encased in crystal, and one shifter took on this grueling responsibility, it would most likely have to be Armin. This solution would result in substantially fewer casualties than the rumbling and Zeke's euthanization plan. Number 4. Attack on Titan is a prequel to Madagascar. Gascar. This theory surprisingly has several pieces of evidence. If you flip the map of the world and attack on Titan vertically, you get the world map we recognize today, where Marley would embody the coast of Africa and the island of Paradise would embody Madagascar. This theory states that the only way to stop the world from persecuting Eldians is to order Emir to make all Eldians into pure beast titans, dwarf beast titans, thus creating the creatures from Madagascar. Some people have drawn huge parallels between Marty and Aaron, as they both were trapped inside walls and have a burning desire for freedom. Freedom. Others argue that Eren became an abnormal beast titan later known as King Julian. I understand some of the most critical naysayers may still be a little doubtful after hearing all this hard evidence, but think about it. Don't you think, I will keep moving forward, bears an undeniable resemblance to, I like to move it, move it? Number 5. Eren caused the death of Mikasa's parents. While this could serve to help Eren by awakening Mikasa's Ackerman powers, the very same powers that protect him multiple times throughout the show, this isn't how the Founding or Attack Titan's powers work. Plus, he didn't possess the Attack Titan or the Founding Titan yet when Mikasa's parents kicked the bucket. There's no direct evidence that Eren can manipulate non-Titan Eldians, and doing this seems completely against what Eren's character would do. Some fans also speculate that Grisha knew about the men and allowed it to happen so Mikasa would bond with Eren, ensuring the Attack Titan's will. If Grisha didn't have it in him initially to take down the Founding Titan's family, even though he had justifiable reason to do so, then I highly doubt he would allow innocent people he knew like Mikasa's parents to die without doing something about it. Number 6. Grisha caused the plague. When traveling from Marley to the island of Paradis, some people argue Grisha brought with him the plague. This makes sense when we consider the people of Paradis would have no immunity to the diseases of the rest of the world. Other people speculate Grisha intentionally caused the plague in order to later cure it and quickly become a well-respected doctor. Being able to treat the most important people within the walls is what allowed him to locate the founding titan. Number 7. Eren is a puppet. This theory is both literal and figurative, with the most striking evidence for it being the season 1 outro. We see Eren's attack titan being manipulated by fleshy strings, leaving fans to speculate that Eren isn't as free as he thinks. Some panels from the manga also support this theory. Number 8. Carl Fritz altered more than just memories. In season 2 when the scouts are inside the castle tower, we get a moment where Reiner discovers Emir can read Marleyan. 
but this is sort of a plot hole. We know languages take a very long time to develop, so it's not reasonably possible for an entirely new language to develop inside the walls within the time Carl Fritz first decided to move over. This has led some fans to believe that Carl Fritz not only wiped the memories of most Eldians, but somehow used the Founding Titan's powers to create a new language altogether. This theory is very believable, as it would be the only way to craft an entirely new language in such a small amount of time. Number 9. Aaron Kruger is Aaron Yeager. Some fans believe Aaron Kruger and Aaron Yeager to be the same person, usually explained by Aaron being a time traveler. Other than the fact that they share the same first name, this theory's only defense is that during Kruger's conversation with Grisha, he mentioned Mikasa and Armin, when they clearly hadn't been born yet. We know Aaron was named after Aaron Kruger, since he played a really important role in Grisha's life. Kruger knowing the names of Mikasa and Armin was explained by Aaron sending his memories backwards to previous attack titans. Number 10. Four-Dimensional Maneuver Gear There are a million and one theories surrounding Aaron being able to time travel, some of which are slightly plausible while others are downright hilarious. Most of these theories stem from the title, To You, 2000 Years Later, possibly insinuating the idea of a future self in connection with the present. All of these theories were essentially put to bed when we learned that Emir existed 2000 years ago and was the first person granted the power of the Titans, that we know of at least. Number 11. Pig Theory This theory is much more figurative, I hope. It states that Eren is the pig that Emir freed 2000 years ago. It's speculated by some that the other pigs are Grisha and Zeke, but Eren was the one to escape due to his passionate desire for freedom. This theory came about because of the fact that the Jaeger family titans have similar pointed ears like the pigs. Besides that, there's not much else in terms of evidence for this theory. Number 12. Who's the father of Historia's child? A lot of mystery has surrounded Historia's pregnancy, mainly because of how elusive it's been presented. Not only was the timing peculiar, but Mystery Farmer Man was revealed basically out of nowhere. The explanation of the father of the queen's baby being a childhood acquaintance who threw rocks at Historia has led fans to come up with several theories. Some fans speculate Aaron is the father and the farmer is a fake, while others speculate Armin might be the father, for some reason. It would make sense for Historia to have a fake father figure given it was Aaron, but that would sort of undermine all the romance elements between Mikasa and Aaron. Do you think Historia chose a childhood bully, or was she a little overly curious about Aaron's hardening abilities? Number 13. Emir Rebirth Theory This theory assumes Eren is the father of Historia's baby. Historia will most likely name the child after her special friend, Emir. It's believed by some people that this baby will actually be the original Emir reincarnated. The story would come full circle this way by having the entire plot begin with the miserable and desperate circumstances Emir found herself in at the beginning, and then allow her to be reborn into a much better world at the end. While this does sound nice, Attack on Titan hasn't really paid focus to the idea of rebirth, so I doubt this would happen. If it did, it would feel sudden and out of place. There's also no guarantee that Emir's life would be any better being reborn into Paradise after the rumbling, since being the child of of Eren would make her a target for destruction and a symbol of hatred. Number 14. It was all a dream. Alright, you knew this was coming. Since the anime and manga begin with an ominous dream, this led many fans to believe that everything we've seen happen so far is still inside a dream. While this could serve as a happier ending of some sort, I highly doubt Isayama would ever take this approach, as it conflicts with the themes and realism of Attack on Titan's story. He's mentioned that his original idea for the ending was one where everyone dies, so this would be a complete 180 from that. Isayama does appear to have an affinity towards the concepts of dreams and time though, so maybe this could be the ultimate leg pull, the troll ending that's so cliche that no one would ever expect it to actually happen. Number 15. Eren is Isayama. This one is hard to prove both literally and metaphorically. Isayama himself has mentioned that Eren was the most difficult character for him to write since he couldn't relate to his personality. He stated that someone confronted with the threat of the Titans who wants to charge forward in the face of this threat is an unrealistic reaction, one he can't relate to. Some 800 IQ theories argue that Isayama has become Eren Jaeger himself by the events that are unfolding in the real world. I won't spoil anything here, but the controversy surrounding the ending of the manga has made some fans view Isayama as the enemy who destroyed Attack on Titan, essentially breaking the fourth wall and becoming Eren Jaeger himself. Some people say Isayama made the manga ending bad on purpose to garner a certain reaction that the anime ending will then resolve. What do you think? Number 16. Eren did nothing wrong. 
I won't go into this one too much, mainly because it's universally wrong to destroy the majority of the world. Morally and ethically, Eren has chosen a greater evil when deciding to crush the majority in the hopes of saving the few. With that said, I'm curious to hear if there are any compelling arguments that Eren actually didn't do anything wrong. Which theory is your favorite? Which one's the most believable? Did anyone else think this military guy or Premier Zachary was the Beast Titan back in Season 2? Hit me with your craziest Attack on Titan fan theory in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one.